and the winning super fan is... Sheila! Tonight's monstrous episode of Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge saw winner Sheila transform a 1970s Volkswagen Beetle into a monster bug. I had a really rough childhood. The monster is like me breaking free. Ooh. It's alive! Wow. <laughs> the winning builds extended custom chassis, big V8 engine, hypnotizing bug eyes, and animated spikes earned this Texas-based social media granny of the car community a key to the finale and a chance to create the next Hot Wheels diecast. Sheila and her carpool worked tirelessly to create the car of her dreams and stepped on the gas when the Inspirationator 5000 took them for a ride. To win 25 grand and a key to the finale, you'll need to modify your current car design to incorporate a moving element. Here goes nothing. Right now, join our panel of car experts, celebrity guest judges, and me, Rutledge Wood, for a revved up debate over which wheels will cruise into the grand finale and who will ride above to become the next Hot Wheels diecast. Turning my Volkswagen Beetle into my own Hot Wheels is beyond a dream come true. This is Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge Best Builds. Okay, Sheila and the monster bug and Kevin with the buckaroo. So let's talk. Sheila, the big winner, what did you guys love about the monster bug? I mean, that thing had so much personality. They really transformed that VW bug into a monster. We saw it come together and we saw so many separate pieces and I was really worried I wasn't gonna see it all become one cohesive thing. These horns will be inserted onto these rods here. Sheila, you wanna do the honor of moving the parts? I don't know if it's going to work. Here we go. Like a dinosaur. It looks like you made the mechanism by hand. Do you guys think this is going to work? There's a certain element of worry, I would say. Yeah. It really blew me away in the end. If you really think about it, they took the top of a beetle and then built everything else from yeah. scratch. That's insane. They took it apart and put it back together. Yeah. And they even put it back together backwards. Insane. <laughs> yeah. How I mean, good do those the fenders front went look? On the back, and right. then the motor went into the That's front. That's true. The custom chassis, the big V8, those eyes, the spikes, the patina that they fabricated. Let's distress the car. I like it. Ready? Hit the car. Ready? We're gonna do what? The Texas Horned Lizard is my inspiration for my design. I want to be scaly looking and rugged. <laughs> they were so happy to do it. <laughs> yeah! Master car! Every little element that they did on their car was done in such fine detail. It's hard not to love it. Yeah, I mean, the monster bug was really wild in how well it stuck to that original theme. I mean, Sheila made a car that really represented the Texas horned lizard, and that's exactly what they did. I mean. They stuck true to the design. They made a car that really looked like it came to life. I mean, with the horns moving, with the eyes, the way they were kind of mesmerizing, I think they really did something wild there. But let's give some props to Kevin's buckaroo because that thing was cool. Hey, yeah! Now that's a buckaroo, baby! I mean, a drop top roadster because the doors were welded shut, T-Bird, that by the way, had hydraulics and bounced in the garage. That was pretty cool. What's there not to love about a slab? Slow, loud, and banging, as Kevin called it. Uh, let's start with the Texas floaters, the wheels that they fabricated. So when he's rolling down the street, you always see Texas and you always see where he's from in Texas. And then you have the flaming horses down the side and the bright blue paint. All great points. You know, something that I really loved about Kevin's build is they took the idea of his horse that he's ridden since his childhood and really took such a poetic approach to his car. Instead of building out a huge horse head, something similar to what Sheila's team did, they used his first horse's horseshoes to make those stirrups that he could giddy up into the car with. And how can we forget that performance on reveal day? I mean, that thing blew me away when it started bucking. Let's buck, baby. <laughs> Hey! Let's go! Yeah, just
just touching on how heavy that vehicle is, mm. building a hydraulic setup for a car that heavy is a special thing. Yeah. A special thing. You got to get the right size hydraulics, and then you got to have six, a simple six battery setup. No big deal. Oh, them. and don't forget and a spring that can actually handle the weight mm -hmm. that's happening with it. My worst nightmare happened. The whole car kind of bent in a U shape. Oh, dude, look at the gap at the top of the door versus the bottom. Yeah. So it's not just straightening the car. We need to over stiffen the car now so it can buck like he wants it to buck and not, not bend again. Just fold yes. totally, yeah, which right. could happen. Yeah, it could very Actually, well happen. Yeah. Oh, gosh. My favorite part of that car for sure Slick's interior. I mean, to use that cow print to really get that theme of Kevin and the finisher, I thought it was incredible. This whole build was about unfinished business. Being able to finish what my dad and I started over 20 years ago, the finisher, it says it all. You finished it. Is it everything you thought it was gonna be? This is the one. This is the one. So let's talk about the twin. The twin mill. Dalal, tell us all about it. One of my all time favorite Hot Wheels. It features exposed twin engines and it's actually one of the most famous and sought after Hot Wheels of all time. It's also the very first Hot Wheels to get turned into a life-size car. Another cool thing is the life-size twin mill has a canopy that opens up. So here's your twist. To win 25 grand and a key to the finale, you'll need to modify your current car design to incorporate a moving element beyond something already moving in your initial design. Uh oh, let's do it. How did Sheila incorporate the twist? She made the horns of her lizard head actually articulate. You could actually switch them open and close from the interior. Here goes nothing. Ready? comes to life. It's alive! Wow. <laughs> Will also created this really cool exhaust system that went all along the side of the body of this car. And they would articulate as you open and close the doors. That's pretty game changing to me. I mean, I've never seen that before of you. Definitely not. How about Kevin and the Buckaroo? How did they use it? What about your wheels? We can do Texas spinning wheels. Weight the Texas sign down so it's static when the rim spin. Now, looks like y'all have made custom Texas shaped floaters. Absolutely, so that was my idea. It's a really cool way to do it, really sleek and kept that slab vibe going on. And not to mention, you know, originally they were planning to just use hydraulics on the front of the car to get it to buck, but when that twist came, they realized we gotta up the ante, we gotta go for broke, and they made all four corners of this car bounce. We pulled it off, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. Oh. <laughs> Hydraulics are awesome. To watch that car go front, back, side to side, a little seesaw and pancake, that was awesome. But ultimately, he didn't change the outside of the car at all, right? It's hard to say Kevin didn't go far because he cut the entire roof off of his Thunderbird. Boy. But ultimately, that didn't really change the silhouette that much. They didn't do anything as far as aero or widening the fenders or giving a lot of those Hot Wheels elements like an exposed V8 or a big exhaust. Because we got to remember, all of these super fans are competing for $25,000 and the shot at their car getting turned into an actual Hot Wheels die cast that you can buy. That's pretty special. Garages, make it big, make it bold, make it awesome. And don't disappoint me. But more importantly, don't disappoint my mama. Now get back to work. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Just right there, mama, they can, they can hear you. So what was the tipping point for Sheila? You know, for me, the tipping point for Sheila was really that she gave this car so much personality. I mean, you cannot look away from those hypnotizing eyes. So there's going to be a total of eight superfan winners. Only three of those superfans will actually be able to build a car in the finale. What do you think Sheila can really bring to the table as far as skills, attributes, personality? for car in the finale. Well, I think Sheila can really bring her story of this drifting grandma and someone who can show you that you can keep doing this for as long as you want and there's no age restriction. 
to motorsports to car design. I've never had passion before until I went to a drift event with my son. I saw some 350Zs drifting four days later. I bought one. And I think she can also bring that passion for where she comes from and making these character-based builds. I mean, you know, we at Hot Wheels, we make a lot of character-based builds all the time, but I haven't seen one like what she's done yet. I think what Sheila brings to this is just being very open to anything. She's a wild card. I never expected to see a Texas horned lizard as a vehicle, so who knows what she would bring to the finale. Pretty exciting. I mean, she turned a car into a lizard, that to me says, yeah, she can, there's a lot she can do. Who will be our grand prize winner and take home $50,000 and have their design turned into a Hot Wheels die cast? Find out on Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. on NBC and streaming the next day on Peacock.